Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's episode we're gonna be doing we're gonna be doing another interview because I've I've seen how good the last interview I did was and people seem to have responded well to it. I've gotten a lot of good a lot of good feedback and engagement from it, so I thought, you know, we'll we'll do another one. So there's a bit of backstory on this before I before I get on to the interview. The way I got this was Magister Kankawim actually approached me after my last video. I, I posted in my community feed that if anyone's in a group that wants to be interviewed that they should join my community. They should join my community's Discord server and just just ask. Because <laughs> I, I, I wanted to do another interview anyway. So yeah, if you like what I do here, drop me a like, drop me a sub, all that good shit. And if you like Magister Kankawim, you can search him up on YouTube by that name. Yeah, if you like him, check him out. And let's go on to the interview. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Uh, so, yeah, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm Magister Cankerworm. Uh, I, I started and run uh, a, a small theistic Satanist group called the Brethren of the Morning Star. Uh, I run a blog uh, under the same name, and, and I have a YouTube channel under my own. Uh, name and uh, I also wrote uh, the the book of infernal prayer, which which we use in our ritual work. Yeah, uh, have you ever been interviewed before? Uh, I have not. How, how long have you been practicing? Uh, as a self-identifying as a theistic Satanist, I guess a little over eight years, but uh, I, I got into um, Thelema and Hermetic Magic, uh, geez, when I was a teenager, so, I mean, if you want to count that for over 20, then. Did you have any other religious views before Satanism? When I was a kid, uh, we attended a, a Baptist church, uh, and then, like I said, in my teen years, uh, I got into Thelema, uh, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, uh, and then, I guess in my mid-20s, right after my first kid was born, I, uh, I actually ended up uh, getting in with a Quaker group for several years, uh, but then w when I left that, got back into Thelema and then kind of came into theistic Satanism from there. When did you get into, like, the overall Satanic online space? Uh, let's see, I, I, I guess I got into it uh, about five or more years ago, mostly on uh, on Reddit, uh, which I don't really get on anymore, but at the time I did. And really, I was just trying to connect with other people, you know, see what they were thinking. Uh, and then eventually that morphed into starting my own blog and then uh, doing the, the YouTube channel. Like, as I, as I understand, you're a diabolist. So w would you just like to give everyone a basic rundown of, like, what, what does that mean to you? What is diabolism? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess I guess one way of putting it is that, you know, every diabolist is a theistic Satanist, but not necessarily every theistic Satanist is a diabolist. Um, I, I guess I would say that the the, uh, the, the primary difference is where uh, I think some theistic Satanists would say, maybe use the language of I work with Satan or I work with Lucifer and, uh, you know, would only see him strictly maybe a, a, as a mentor figure uh for a diabolist i mean there there's explicit devotion uh there's an idea that you know satan is a god that uh deserves worship uh and so uh, i think that that aspect is is really kind of the the foundational difference what would you say the the main the, the main principles of diabolism like like philosophically or whatever yeah, um, I mean, I don't, I don't think, for the most part, they're probably not too much different than uh, what most theistic Satanists or even kind of general left-hand path practitioners would follow. I would, you know, say um, uh, free thinking, uh, you know, questioning sort of social standards and norms, uh, an emphasis on both self-preservation uh and uh apo self-apotheosis um mm, the i think where the where the difference you know i am so uh, everything i just said then i mean that's pretty generic left-hand path stuff I, I would say the, the the difference there 
uh, is wearing diabolism. Sort of similar, I guess, in uh, to Thelema, there would be this idea of, you know, of, of a true will, or, or, you know, we would say either finding your law or, or finding, you know, your, your inner daemon of, um, you know, Satan has put something in you unique and that uh, you, you you sort of the, the ultimate form of, of worship and devotion to him is trying to discover, you know, that sort of black flame within and then staying uh, true and devoted to it and living from that place. How true do you think the Bible is? I mean, I think there's there's some truth in it. Uh, I, I mean, we, I, I don't think the Bible is the only place we can learn about Satan. I think there's other, uh, there's other places we can get information, but certainly, I mean, you know, as far as the name, uh, a, a lot of the, uh, the beginnings of the mythology of, you know, of Lucifer's fall, um, I mean, that has its roots in the Bible. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, I guess it's hard to quantify it in a, in a, you know, in a percentage way, but, but I do think it's an important book for theistic Satanists to be, um, acquainted with, you know, not necessarily to read it from cover to cover, but I think knowing the general gist of it, uh, you know, there, there's a lot there. And, and, but I mean, you do have to kind of read between the lines. Um, you know, so something that's, you know, so for example, something that's I interesting to me, uh, if you, if you look at some of the historical books, specifically in the, you know, in the Old Testament or, or the, the Hebrew Bible. You know, we can see that at one point there was a, a goddess figure, a queen of heaven, who Jeremiah speaks about, uh, that uh, some of the prophets began complaining about there being sacrifices to. And uh, we know of that figure as Asherah, the, and often her worship was revolved around a tree. So you have this goddess figure who uh, is connected to tree imagery. And, and we know that there was garden and tree imagery in the temple. Uh, and we also know from other books in the Old Testament that at one point in the temple, uh, there was a brazen serpent, a bronze serpent, who people uh, would also worship. And uh, eventually the, the prophets got tired of that. And, and so we see uh, some of the, uh, the later kings after Solomon ended up getting rid of this, this serpent uh, iconography some of this tree goddess iconography and thrown it out. And so, but that's that, that's part of why I think you kind of have to read between the lines and it's an important book for theistic Satanists because that put knowing that, okay, at one point the temple had a, a snake and a tree in it and that people saw these as figures to venerate and, and to give worship to, that puts a whole nother spin uh, on what's going on with Genesis. And, and you know, it then has to raise questions of, oh, okay, so what is going on here with this book where, you know, uh, Jehovah and his prophets are constantly complaining that people aren't worshiping me right. Uh, you know, you're, you're going off and uh, giving sacrifices to these these pagan gods. So, uh, you know, if, if you're not familiar with with that literature, then, you know, you, you miss you miss out on a lot of that. You, what is Satan? I, I would say Satan is uh, to me, the ultimate sort of masculine uh, divinity, uh, if you want to talk about it in terms of like Kabbalistic tree of life, uh, you know, I, I would say that he embodies Hakma, uh, the positive uh, revolutionary uh, force of divinity. Um, so, so yeah, I would see him as a creative figure, a creative deity. Uh, but also one that has been essential in shaping and guiding humanity through our evolution as a species. What are your views on Yahweh? I, I would say uh, Yahweh or, or Jehovah, you know, that, that would typically be how we would uh, name him as. Uh, my views are that he is uh, he's jealous, he's violent. Uh, he is a liar. Uh, I think. I think his his mo is sort of um, law and order taken to a destructive extreme. Uh, I see Yahweh as this figure that has this um, 
plan or perspective of this is how the universe should work down to sort of a, a you know micro manager level of detail and, and so it wants to squash any chaos any kind of liberty uh, freedom whatsoever and and have things run on his plan uh, you know and essentially enslave creation uh, to his very narrow uh, set of parameters he what are demons uh so you know if you're looking at the etymology uh, of demon you know you're going to go to to daemon from latin and then the daimon in greek uh, i think technically speaking you know originally those words sort of just uh, meant uh, an intermediary spirit. So mediating between the material realm and, and the divine or the spiritual realm. Uh, I think when when we and the Brethren of the Morning Star speak of daemons or demons, and I think this is probably likewise true for other theistic Satanists as well. I think we what, what we really mean when we say that are, are spirits that are um, in some ways aligned with uh, Satan, Satan's values, uh, and so, um, and that would distinguish. I mean, I think there are chaotic spirits. Uh, you know, there are there are spirits that aren't necessarily, or well, don't have humanity's best interest maybe at heart. But I, when I, when a theistic Satanist is talking about a demon or a daemon, I don't think that's what how we're using the term. We're, we're using it more in this. This is a spirit. Uh, that in some way is an allegiance with this same infernal power that that we are as well. What are your views on modern occultism? Uh, hmm. I, I mean, we we I mean, we utilize a lot of sort of the Hermetic revival uh, and you know, Thelema that you know what what Crowley took from that and and ran with. So. Um, uh, I mean, I, I have positive feelings about it, I guess, f from that perspective. Um, you know, it's, it, it's like anything. There are there's some people and some sources that are better than others. Uh, I can't remember who, uh, who it's named after, but uh, I remember hearing years ago when I first got into the occult, the, there's some, some rule of, you know, nine tenths out of what you're going to come across uh, is, is, is crap. And there's probably a lot of truth in that, uh, and and a lot of it, uh, to be honest, at least in terms of books and all that, is just sort of a rehash uh, of, of early authors. So um, so there is that to it. But you know, generally speaking, you know, uh, we're we're fully on board with sort of modern occult movements and and practices. Moving on to more like questions relating to your book, can you just give me like? A basic rundown of like what it's about, just just for anyone not clued in. Yeah. Uh, so the the first edition of it, oh, I put out about a few years ago, and then just just here in the past month or so, uh, put out a, a revised edition. So the structurally speaking, uh, the book is very similar to the Anglican Anglican Book of Common Prayer. Um, but the idea was uh, I wanted to give uh, both diabolists and theistic Satanists a, a resource that uh, they could have liturgical prayers, psalms, uh, rituals, and ceremonies um, that would be both sort of artistically uh, pleasing, you know, would, I mean, hopefully be beautiful in, in, in some places. Uh, but also would be sort of theologically and philosophically sound and, and very much rooted in, in left-hand path thought. Uh, so, you know, it, it's meant for a tool of devotion and prayer. Um, so the, the first section mostly has psalms and different voices. So there's there's a section where, like, for instance, uh, Satan is the speaker, Lilith's the speaker, Cain is the speaker. Uh, and so on. And then later sections are strictly more uh, prayers uh, and and rituals. What was the writing process like? Uh, you know, it took, um, well, I mean, if you're counting between 
with the first and this revised edition, I mean, it was over a, a period of something like four or five years uh, that I wrote it. So, uh, I mean, a lot of it was just crafting uh, and then going back and, and kind of prayerfully saying, all right, what, where do I need to go with this? Uh, utilizing either either tarot cards or just meditation to get sort of a feeling of, all right, am I am I going in the direction that uh, Satan and the Loth want me to go in, or or you know, do I need to uh, uh, revise things? Uh, and then the other part of that was that even then, so okay, when, when something's written, uh, the other big part of the process was, all right, let's use it for you know two, three, four months, and then figure out what works, what doesn't. Uh, you know, and so getting the feel for mechanically, you know, is this all fitting together like it should? Did you have any help? Mm -hmm. uh, so most of the writing I, I did myself, but one of our uh, members, Reverend Zeriel, he he did the he did the illustrations in the there's a uh, rosary of Lilith section, uh, and so uh, there. I think it's 16 total illustrations that he he did for that part, and uh, I wasn't uh, I wasn't all that involved with those. I mean, I pretty much just approached him, that all right, here's here's the text, you know, I want I want illustrations for each section, and I think really the only kind of guidance I gave him was that I, I wanted them to be in sort of a woodcut uh, type style uh, of illustration. So, but other than that, then he just took the text and and ran with it and you know i thought his illustrations turned out pretty pretty well i thought so uh so yeah the, he, he was the the other major collaborator on it what inspired you to write your book what inspired me is that um i personally have found pre-written uh liturgical prayer to be to be powerful to have sort of a, a schedule of prayer i think that's a devotional practice that um, for me and, and for others can be a very uh, powerful uh, tool and there just wasn't a lot out there either for diabolist or theistic satanists in general I, I felt like that really fit that bill i mean there are some other there's some books out there that, that have that have prayers um but uh, I really wanted something that I felt was uh, sort of mature philosophically, uh, was um, high quality in terms of aesthetics, um, and was philosophically grounded. Um, there's a uh, there's a Latin motto, uh, Lex Orandi, Lex Credendi. So the the law of prayer is the law of belief, uh, and so that 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 motto tries to um, sum up this idea that there is a there's a two way relationship between prayer and belief, and so part of that that two way road is that if you're praying something you know on a regular basis or you know you you got this cycle of prayers that you're doing over and over and over, that's gonna plant seeds, uh, initiatory seeds. It's going to, it's a teaching tool, uh, a catechistic uh, tool. And so the, the idea was, okay, here's something that if, uh, if a diabolist or a theistic Satanist is going to use this book regularly, you know, let's say over a period of several months or, or a you know, year or more later, they're going to have sort of subtly have planted left-hand path philosophy, you know, uh, initiatory principles internalize them uh and you know in a obviously in a in a somewhat slower way than you would necessarily just reading a, an essay outright or something like that but i feel like that that kind of subtle over time uh, of taking all that in letting it grow sort of in the unconscious that that in many ways can be uh you know more powerful than just okay uh, i'm gonna sit down and read this book you know i'm gonna read some some nietzsche or some michael ford or, or you know whoever on the left hand path or levee and then run with it i think this really just sort of these these prayers and you know you so you're not discursively thinking about it it just sort of in the back of your mind it, it's gonna uh percolate and, and then you know really turn into something powerful over time we you influenced by any other books or authors um yeah there's uh 
some of the sections have passages or pieces by Crowley uh, in the book. So there's there's quite a few of uh, if his work kind of quoted in there. Uh, he was a he's a big influence on me personally, but I think for most people would agree he was a big influence on the left hand path in general. Uh, Levey to a certain degree also. Uh, there's a there's a place where where I quote him a little, and so I definitely think. Um, you know, I don't, LeVay is a, a contentious topic uh, among Satanists, but, you know, whether you think he ever was theistic or not, uh, I think all theistic Satanists tend to, uh, have to admit, uh, you know, most of us, we wouldn't be where we're at if, if it wasn't for LeVay and the Satanic Bible. So, um, so he definitely was a uh, an influence as well. How is your book different from others in the same area, like, others within diabolism i would say it's partly different um uh, one because it, it it is structured to use uh for a, a daily prayer office primarily so um you know there there are other fistic satanist books out there that have prayers and they're you know they're more just all right here's a here's a random you know, here's a prayer for this topic or this issue here's a prayer for this uh, and the, uh, the the reader is just sort of left their own devices with it. Uh, this book is much more set up like a traditional office of the hours. There is a uh, a suggested sort of daily reading uh, of a psalm, and then uh, every day of the week there's a set of, of prayers to go through. Now, obviously, if someone doesn't have to follow uh, that rubric; they can go off and do what they want if they want but i think for people that want something more structured and, and are looking for uh you know hey i'm gonna have this um uh, like i like i was just talking about this sort of the initiatory relationship uh with this text you know i, I think that that setup is going to be much more conducive uh for them than that uh for them uh i would say the other thing that that makes it different uh um there's some good, uh, there are some good Eastic Satanist prayer books. Uh, one of my favorites, uh, well, which ironically now with, I guess, what's going on with her, but Marie Ravensoul's Ed Satan's Altar was a great book. Uh, I, you know, in the past would have uh, recommended it to people wholeheartedly. Um, but besides, besides her, I, you know, I mean, there's other books out there, but uh, not to be mean, but a lot of them are kind of immature. Uh, so I, I wanted something that was not just uh, angry, you know, angsty. I want to shock people or or be an edge lord. You know, Diabolist prayers. These are uh, tried and based on the feedback I get from people, I think we succeeded in creating something that was, uh, you know, more sophisticated and deeper than that. Moving on to more questions, like revolving around your group, what, what would you say is your 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 main mission or purpose? Uh, I mean, our main mission is for uh, equipping the individual members and finding that uh, you know what what I would would call their their inner law, their inner daemon, if you want to call it the black flame, your true will, you know, whatever. There's a lot of terms, and they all maybe have their their pros and cons of what they're kind of pointing at but but ultimately you know they're, they're your great work um you know ultimately our, our main goal is to uh, align ourselves with uh with satan and hell's power and through that to discover you know what it is that we're meant to be here in this you know particular incarnation and so uh helping equip one another to to discover that and, and live that out as authentically as we can what doctrine do you follow do you just follow the book of infernal prayer or do you also point to some other books um i mean i would say our, our book of infernal prayer definitely has the foundational uh, doctrine in it uh i mean so i mean i guess we would loosely to some degree, follow the, the book of the law. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily. I don't. I don't know that I would. 
I'm not going to say that it's an errand or anything, but uh, but generally the you know do it that well. We would we would follow that. Um, trying to think if there's anything. Uh, I mean, anyway, we, we definitely we pull some for, from from Nietzsche as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would say the, the book Infernal Prayer, uh, Infernal Prayer encapsulates sort of our, our doctrine. Uh, but you know, we're we're pulling from other sources in that, and definitely if someone you know if someone's in the group and, and they're wanting to to train up or to to learn to to progress, then there's definitely a lot more books other than that that you know they're gonna gonna have recommended for them to read how long have you been running um let's see so uh, a few of us that are involved in it we were doing uh thalamic work together and then it sort of just all shifted together into theistic satanism so uh, in terms of um explicitly okay we're the brethren of the morning star now we're a theistic satanist group uh about six or seven years somewhere somewhere in there how many members do you have in total uh official uh yeah, there's six of us and then there are uh, a handful of other people who um sort of utilize our system but do it you know in a very more independent way and just sort of uh you know they're not uh, officially uh members but so but uh, in terms of quote unquote official members it would be six of us what is your organizational hierarchy look like? Uh, so, uh, I guess administratively, uh, I would be the one sort of uh, directing things from the from a more executive level, uh, and then, but that's with with input from others. So, I mean, in um, I guess functionally speaking, really, that just means I sort of have last vote on, uh, you know, really just with the book or how we're going to wear a particular ritual or, or something like that. Uh, I would love to, I have, uh, you know, there, there's there's one member who, who I recognize as being a, like a, a priest level, so that would be the, the, the level just under to me. Uh, unfortunately, he's not really uh, then they're interested in interacting with uh, the outside public all that much. So I would love to get more people in and and progressed up to a point where I could sort of say, okay, all right, you're you're at this level, you know, now to where you can mentor people. And then I would would, would love to get more of you know a, a, a council of us, kind of uh, at that top executive level. But but at the at the moment, really, I'm I'm the only one who's doing that work. How does your group differ from other satanic organizations? I think, uh, I guess a couple of main differences would be one, we explicitly uh, in, uh, involve uh, Lilith as a uh, an equal part of our worship. So if, if, if you know, Kabbalistically speaking, if we're placing Satan and Hoffma, then we're we're gonna put Lilith and Bina. So where where Lucifer is the epitome, sort of the divine masculine, then Lilith would be our epitome of the divine feminine. So that's one difference. Uh, the other would be that uh, we we blend, I would say, sort of right hand and left hand practices. Uh, I, I know. For for some people, this is a, a contentious topic. You know, some people want to make a very clear demarcation between okay, there's there's left hand path, there's right hand path, and you know, never the twain shall meet. But uh, we we do not take that approach. So uh, again, if you're thinking of like the, the tree of life, you know, we would want to approach things more from the perspective of the serpent's path, of going, you know, uh, uh, wrapping our way around both the uh the pillars of severity mercy you know and oh. sorry i thought you were done oh no it's all right but yeah so that, those would be the two major differences what are some misconceptions people have about like your beliefs or your group uh i would i would say the primarily that we're um reverse 
Christian right hand path only. Uh, I would say that would be the the main misconception. What are your thoughts on inverse Christianity? Like, are you are you completely against that? I, I think it's too it's too simplistic, right? So um, I think if if we're really talking about you know inverse or, or reverse Christianity, uh, I mean to, to me what that means is saying okay if if Christianity is for it then we're against it uh, and vice versa you know if it's against it then we're for it but uh, I, I just don't I don't think anyone actually lives uh, their life that way for one uh, you know I, I don't. Um, I think Satan has very uh, definite values, right? And so, um, and, and although the, sure there's some gray sometimes, uh, you know, the, the, the genocide of entire ethnicities of, of people, Yahweh's fine with that. I, I do not think Lucifer is fine with that. Uh, so, um, you know, the, there are there are basic sort of values that we have and so uh and and in some there's going to be some overlap with with christianity because it's a it's a you know social religion as much as anything else so you know we're not going to be for murder we're not going to uh support theft uh or rape um so uh and and christianity generally speaking is against all those things as well so uh you know that would be my my issue with it and with the reverse or inverse Christianity. What are your thoughts on other groups that identify as diabolists? Uh, I mean, I, I'm sure there's some some good ones out there that I don't. Uh, I mean, I don't have any particular issue with. I know um, Brother Nemo, uh, who I think sometimes I don't. R.J. Womack, I don't know if that's his real name or if that's just uh, uh, the name he goes by on the internet sometimes, but I know he he identifies specifically as a diabolist. Uh, for the most part, you know, I I, I think his his thoughts and his stuff is, is pretty good. Some of it, some of it when he gets into the treating Satanists like they're their own kind of bloodline ethnicity, some of that gets a little wacky for me. But if you kind of put bracket that off and, and put it to the side. You know, I, I think he's got some good stuff that's worth listening to. Um, I I can't remember if uh, I think Alistair knocked. I think sometimes uh, he refers as a diabolist. Um, I want to think he does. If he doesn't, I'd, I mean, he's got some good stuff, too. Um, and uh, I, I don't know how much of a, a group he has, but uh, uh Shay Belay is another diabolist too. I definitely would uh, fully support his work, uh, his podcast, or his book. Uh, people should check him out. He's definitely somebody worth looking into. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you with that thing about R.J. Womack. When when he said that in his book, uh, the, the Bainer's Guide to Satanism, that that really caught me <laughs> off guard. That did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because so much of his other stuff is it's just like okay yeah yeah i'm right on board with you and then just out of nowhere it's like whoa what what <laughs> what what yeah, is he, this he does, so... some, he does have some good points but sometimes he misses the mark <laughs> he does and honestly i think i think where he misses the mark part of it is i, I think he uh he too much sort of wants to take yazidism and how they practice in a in a more modern sense and uh, completely take that over into theistic Satanism. And so while I do think books like the al uh, and I, I mean, I think at one point, certainly the Yazidi were devil worshippers, that's, that's my opinion. I think because of historical uh, events and things that they went through, uh, you know, they very much became very xenophobic, uh, enclosed, they don't marry outsiders, you know, and so I, I just don't, I, I think that's where some of that comes from when, when he writes that is it, from the Yazidi stuff. But I just don't think, you know, I don't think there's a one to one translation there of, OK, here's Yazidi faith, here's Theistic Satanism, and you can, you know, they, they completely go back and forth. It, it doesn't work that way. 
moving on to the last question I have for you. What would you say are some of the big plans you have for your group in future? Uh, big plans. I would I would love to um, see more people get involved that uh, specifically are interested in progressing to a point where they can have uh, you know a public or semi-public satanic ministry uh, of working with people. Uh, encouraging, teaching, mentoring others. Uh, I would love to to see that happen. Uh, but but barring that, I mean, even just getting more people and being able to to help them figure out where they want to go, or, or you know, to to do uh, with that sort of infernal spirit that they have. Uh, you know, I would love to get more people in just generally for that purpose. But to, to train more people to where they can then turn around and minister to others. That, that would be a big goal. Um, and then the other, uh, I have a book of uh, sort of essays, a, a more sort of philosophical uh, discursive book uh, that I'm that I'm working on. So uh, that would that would be the other big big project for us is sort of laying out a um, you know a book more a, a, of theory uh, and theology. Do you have anything else you'd like to touch on before we go? No, I mean, I would just, you know, encourage people, uh, you know, if, if they're interested in us at all, uh, brethren of the morning star dot com. There's a there's a contact me button there. I have the YouTube channel uh, under just, you know, search for Magister Cankerworm. Uh, I'm there. Uh, you know, if you, if you want to see more of, you know, my, my video or audio material. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if any of this, you know, sounds like something that um, sounds like what you're looking for, then check us out and, you know, get, get in touch with me. And, and the, the only last thing I would say, thanks for, thanks for having the, taking the time to, to talk with me today. I really appreciated it. Yeah, of course. You, you've you been a, I think you're quite an interesting person. I do. I've, I've enjoyed our conversation. <laughs>